This is the Earth Science Classroom. In this video, we're going to discuss the top 10 earthquakes ever recorded around the Pacific Ring of Fire. Now, this area is extremely tectonically active with volcanoes and earthquakes and tsunamis. That includes both subduction zones and oceanic trenches and transform plate boundaries, divergent plate boundaries with the Pacific rise and looking at different tectonic plates, one being the Pacific Oceanic Plate, the Eurasian Plate, North American, South American, the Nazca Plate, which is a smaller oceanic plate, the Antarctic Plate, the Indo-Australian Plate, plates like the Philippine Plate, the Burma Plate, Sundra Plate, and the Cocos and the Caribbean Plate, all play a major part in creating this very active part of the world whereby earthquakes and volcanoes are a commonality each year, and these are the top 10 biggest earthquakes recorded around the Pacific Ring of Fire. At number 10, this earthquake was in Indonesia in 2005 and registered at 8.6 on the modified Richter scale. And this was caused by the Indo-Australian plate subducting underneath the Sunda plate. At number nine, we move on to the US and look at Alaska which is an extremely large state in this country and has numerous volcanoes and earthquakes every year. And this one in particular was absolutely huge. It was 1946 and it registered at 8.6 magnitude on the Richter scale. And this was between the Pacific plate subducting under the North American plate. At number eight, we stay in the same area of the world, the same state, Alaska, but in 1965, this was a little bit bigger. This is at 8.7. So don't forget the scale of the Richter scale is logarithmic. So a small percentage point larger is a lot greater amount of energy. So 8.7 is a lot bigger in energy release than 8.6 or 8.5. And this occurred on Rat Island, which is a bunch of islands and archipelago that extend out from the Alaskan mainland and into the Pacific. And this is directly next to the Alaskan Trench or Lucian Trench. And this is where the convergent plate boundary between the Pacific and North American. And this subduction zone caused the 8.7 magnitude earthquake. Now we're on to number seven out of the top 10, moving on to the continent of South America and the country of Ecuador. And the epicenter was located on the coastline between the Nazca plate and the South American plate, a convergent plate boundary where there is a large trench. And this was in 1906 and registered an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake. We stay in South America for number six, which is located in Chile in 2010, so more recent earthquake. And this was an 8.8 .8 on the Richter scale. So we're getting pretty intense now with the amount of energy, the shaking and the seismic waves and the intensity of these earthquakes at number five in our top 10 earthquakes of the Ring of Fire, we move over to Asia and Russia, in particular, the Kamchatka Peninsula, where we had in 1952, an extremely large magnitude 9.0 earthquake occur. And this was a result of the Pacific plate subducting underneath the Eurasian plate. At number four, we move a little southwest into the great country of Japan, where in 2011, there was a devastating 9.1 earthquake, which was caused by the Pacific plate, so ducting at the trench against the Eurasian plate. And this was the earthquake that caused the destruction of the Fukushima nuclear power plant and caused a meltdown and a very large environmental disaster. Now we're up to the top three largest earthquakes ever recorded around the Ring of Fire. And this one is in Indonesia. We're back over in Southeast Asia. And this was happened in 2004. And it was a 9.2 magnitude earthquake. And this was between the Burma plate, a very small micro plate, and the larger Indo-Australian plate, which was subducting under the smaller Burma plate. And this was a devastating earthquake, which caused a devastating or even greater disaster in the tsunami that went across the Indian Ocean and caused devastation, death and havoc over the majority of this geographic region. 
At number two, we have the second largest earthquake ever recorded by humans. Again, it is in Alaska, and this happened four years after the largest ever recorded earthquake, and this was in 1964, and this was a 9.2 magnitude earthquake that occurred between the Pacific plate subducting underneath the North American plate. And this was an absolutely massive amount of energy released from the Earth's crust. And last but not least, the biggest earthquake ever recorded by humans was located in Chile in 1960, and it was recorded as a 9.5 on the modified Richter scale absolutely massive earthquake, the biggest ever, and was a mega thrust between the Nazca plate and the South American plate. So in conclusion, this top 10 list is showing you areas around the Ring of Fire that have experienced these very large, highly destructive, devastating earthquakes at different times in the past 70 years in different parts of the world around the edge of the Pacific Ocean, where you'll find a lot of the convergent plate boundaries, the oceanic trenches and the subduction zones, and more importantly, the mega thrust areas where these large earthquakes tend to occur. You have three of the top 10 occurring around Alaska. You have two of the top 10 occurring around Chile and North and Ecuador. And you have two occurring in Indonesia with the Sumatra and the Indo-Australian plate. And Japan and Russia make up the rest. But you have concentrated areas where you find these large earthquakes. Now, the biggest earthquake that wasn't in or around the Ring of Fire occurred in 1950 in Tibet, which is part of the Himalayan mountain range, a country in that area. And it was an 8.6, which would put this on the list around nine and 10 for this list. However, it wasn't part of the Ring of Fire. Now, the area in general experiences at least one large earthquake per year on average, which is over 8.0 in the Richter scale. So we expect that different areas of the Ring of Fire will experience more frequent, large, devastating earthquakes. Unfortunately, we can do nothing about it, just improve our way of measuring and predicting the release of energy, where and when it's going to happen through more scientific research. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.